Hello everyone and welcome to this new span of lecture in the topic of non-ST elevation acute coronary syndrome. And today we are speaking about an unfamous term, but it looks familiar to some of you, which is pseudonormalization of T wave. In this lecture we are going to learn how to diagnose pseudonormalization and what is its clinical significance. Let's see this ECG at first. What can we see here? We can see here that the patient is having sinus rhythm and he's having like flattened or mildly inverted T wave in V5 and V6. Then, when the patient had another ECG, when he was having chest pain, the patient showed here that the T waves are upright in V5 and V6. So we have mildly inverted or flattened T waves and then they turn to be upright in the same leads. So, is it a clinical significant finding or not? This is what we call pseudonormalization of T-wave. The patient was having pre-existing abnormally negative or flattened T-wave in the ECG and then completely reverted to a positive T-wave when he had angina syndrome. So here, it is the reverse of what we see commonly in our clinical practice that the patient during chest pain is having T-wave inversion. No, he was having T-wave inversion or flattened T-wave before chest pain, his resting ECG. And when he developed anginal pain, he had positive T wave. So he has like a superimposition of acute myocardial ischemia over chronic ischemic injury. So most probably this patient was non ischemic, and then when he had an acute ischemia, he had positive T wave. Monsieur Etano was the first to show evidence that pseudonormalization of T wave is related to transmural ischemia in 1978. They showed an evidence that the patient is having resting T wave inversion as a chronic ischemia. And when he developed angina symptom, he has positive T wave, and this is related to the evidence of acute myocardial ischemia. And when MPI using technician was performed during the angina attack at rest in these patients, it showed evidence of severe hyperperfusion in the myocardial region corresponding to the location of the T wave changes, similar to that same in patient with ST elevation during angina. So the related this not just to subendocardial ischemia, but even to transmural. Ischemia. So T wave inversion here when they became positive in the lateral leak is related to lateral wall ischemia, for example. So pseudonormalization pattern can signify an early sign preceding ST elevation, coronary vasospasm, and sometimes it may occur in a symptomatic patient, but in most of the cases it signifies acute myocardial ischemia. And so pseudonormalization may be sometimes the only sign of acute myocardial ischemia. So the first ECG here showing resting chronic myocardial ischemia in the form of resting tear inversion and then it became positive. So pseudonormalization is different from hyperacute T wave. In hyperacute T wave, the first ECG or the baseline ECG show normal positive T wave. And then during the ischemic episode, the T wave became hyperacute and it is more than two thirds of the complex amplitude as we learned before. So there is a difference between pseudonormalization of T wave and hyperactivity wave, although both may precede the T elevation in some cases, but it is very important to recognize the difference. So why is it called pseudonormalization? Normalization because the ECG is apparently normalized. The T wave was inverted and it became positive. So it became normal, but pseudo because it is not normal, it is abnormal and signifying a sinister pathology. Because here I suspect that the patient is having acute myocardial ischemia superimposed on chronic myocardial ischemia, leading to the positive T wave. That's why it's called pseudo normalization. And it's diagnosed through serial ECG, not just one ECG. So, please, you will not diagnose pseudo normalization just from a patient having tube conversion. You should compare it to a previous ECG in order to say that the patient is having pseudo normalization. Not just positive T wave in a patient who's having chest pain, you just suspect pseudo normalization without baseline ECGs to compare with. So, let's see this ECG example here. The first ECG here is showing resting T wave inversion in the infralateral leads. And then during chest pain, the T wave became positive in the same leads. This is what we call pseudonormalization. Let's explain it. Here, the normal T wave were upright, but they became inverted in a patient when he had history of non C elevation acute coronary syndrome that was reperfused, but leaving this evidence of baseline resting T wave inversion. Then, when the patient developed chest pain, these T waves became upright. 
seeming to be normal, but it is pseudonormal. It is not normal because the artery here re-occludes, leading to the pattern of positive T waves in the improved lateral limb. And this is what we call pseudonormalization. And so in the inverted T waves, we can suddenly apply, I should suspect that the patient had re-occlusion of the infarct liberated artery. After revascularization here, the patient developed again resting T wave inversion because of the reopening of the infarcturated artery. So it seems that the T wave inversion here is considered like the apparently normal finding, not the T wave, the positive T waves. So when he had successful revascularization, he restored his original ECG of resting T wave inversion. Here they are present in the inferior limb, not the lateral limb. But here, this is a follow-up ECG after revascularization. So this patient baseline pattern is a T-wave inversion, and the positive T-wave is the abnormal finding. So what's the problem here? The problem is that some ECG changes or pseudonormalization are usually subtle, and so sometimes they may be considered as a clinical improvement. When you see this patient in the CCU, you may see that the ECG is improved when his T-waves became positive, but don't be saved because you are missing the optimal treatment for these changes as unstable angina and sometimes he may have total occlusion of the culprit artery and he may need to be scheduled for invasive coronary angio. So this patient here, for example, is having resting T-wave inversion in the infralateral lead and then when he has chest pain, he is developing T-wave which are positive in these leads but here it is associated with this T-elevation. So here the patient has the pattern of the positive T wave of the pseudonormalization together with the ST elevation. So sometimes pseudonormalization may be alone and sometimes they may be accompanied by the ST elevation due to the total occlusion of the culprit vessel. So please, pseudonormalization is not usually clinically insignificant. No, it should be clinically significant even if it is just isolated pseudonormalization. In order to be honest, there is some controversy in some literature about the significance of pseudonormalization in correlation with ischemia. But also, we need to say that most of the controversy is regarding its occurrence in exercise ECG, not in resting ECG. Because sometimes a patient is having resting T wave inversion, and when he is having a treadmill test with the exercise and the acceleration of the heart rate, this resting T wave inversion tends to be positive. And so, there is controversy whether this finding in the treadmill test is significant or not. That's why a patient with resting tube inversion is not a good candidate for treadmill test. But in serial ECG, it is significant. And you should not mix or ignore a patient is having pseudonormalization pattern in his serial ECG, especially if this patient is presenting with chest pain. So patient with chest pain and pseudonormalized C waves in resting ECG, please, it is always significant and this patient would need to be scheduled for early invasive strategy if not primary PCI, if the patient is having persistent chest pain or having associated ST elevation with the pseudonormalized T wave. And we understood today what's the meaning of pseudonormalized T waves. So at the end of this short interesting lecture, we understood today how to diagnose pseudonormalization T waves and what is its clinical significance. And our take home message today is pseudonormalization pattern is an easily missed feature and sometimes it's very deceiving for many doctors, making the ECG apparently normal. But there is a sinister pathology working behind, so beware of pseudo-normalization. Thank you very much for your watching.